Hi guys, just a quick one. This is done in edit. Um, basically the cap today I'm wearing it. Hair starting to grow out while in self-isolation. Thought I'd put a cap on and spare everyone the eye saw. Um, second of all, this video is just going to be talking about the third year pathways you can take in real estate. Basically, different modules, they offer different pathways. But broad, more broadly, for people on different courses, what you should look for when you should be pick, picking your module. For people at Reading, uni, or the University of Reading, or those looking to head to the University of Reading, what optional modules you can pick. And yeah, if you like the sound on that, please stick around, smash the like button, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Without further ado, adios. Hi guys, how are you doing? Thank you very much for joining me. Can I ask if you had a good day so far? Yeah, has the community been doing well? Feeling, feeling good? So I know I have, I've had a very productive day. So I thought I'd do this different style of video, a lot looser, basically without a script, just talking about third year and possibly fourth year at Reading University, the different pathways you can take down real estate. So for those of you who missed my last week's video, please go check it out. But essentially over our first two years, the course is very structured and is an introduction to real estate. Within your third year, you get a bit more choice, you can pick different options and you can see where you want to take your career. That specialism, given you've already had a prior insight, that's the position I'm in now. So I thought I'd discuss for anybody who's like, I don't know, maybe looking to come to Ring in the future, maybe just interested in a real estate degree because nobody else really talks about it. Whenever I mention it, people are like, oh, I don't know anyone else doing that, etc., etc. So yeah, just, yeah. Now, there's three pathways you can take at Reading, but there's two more within those three, so it's sort of five, but I mean, I'll discuss that later. Three main ones are development, sorry, development of planning, asset management and appraisal, and investment and property, I believe, investment finance and property. Make it, you can change the name of your degree to that, or you can keep it as real estate, depending on the pathway you want to take, and if you, if you want to take the paths within paths. So <laughs> to make that a bit clearer, you can do a rural path, which means you'd have to take the asset management and then add the rural options on. Or you can take a path to a master's in urban planning and that's, or urban development of planning. And that's, you have to do the development of planning undergrad in order to do that. So say to do the, you could supposedly, I believe, do the development and planning module and still call it an investment or finance property degree. But if you wanted to do the fourth year, I don't believe you could do that. But essentially, the asset management route is all about managing the asset you have. So say a big, so say a big shopping centre, it's all about basically different streams of income, looking after what tenant is coming in, what tenant's going out, how do you value that, how could you get more from that, what should you be looking at to keep the property up to spec. And that's the basic pathway. The development and planning is more about, okay, so flattening, either flattening something or starting on grass, how do you build up to that? Well, not grass, you know what I mean, just an open space. And then building up, how do you build something upon that? How do you plan, where does it go, etc. And the investment pathway is a lot more mathematical based, stats, quantitative techniques, um, looking at REITs, looking at investment models, looking at inve uh, international models. And yeah, so it's three very different pathways all coming under the same um, broad bracket of real estate. But from there, you get your, that's your base, and you have 80 optional, mod, uh, op, 80 credits, sorry, there. Then you have 40 optional credits you can do. And say for me, this is where I've struggled the most. I've been able to pick my pathway. I believe I'm going down a development and planning pathways. That's what most interests me. But I'll come on to that as another caveat later, as in what made me pick that one specifically. Where I've had real trouble is picking the optional modules. At the moment, I'm on about 270 credits and I believe the maximum you can do is 120 and the minimum you can do is 120, so I should know better. But I'll cut that down <laughs> soon. For anyone who's on the course, possibly in the year below me or years to come, the way I'd recommend doing it was recommended to me, is you'll go onto the mod, you'll look at your optional modules, you'll see basically when is it taught, because you don't want to say everything in the spring term, nothing in the autumn, nothing in the summer, and then you're working a 100 hour work week in the middle, that's not going to work for you. You want to look at the assessment method. Do you do better on the exam side or the coursework side? Then you want to look at the module convener. Convener, Have you worked with them before? Did you particularly like them? Did you particularly dislike them? Would you want to work with them again? 
and you look at the content and is it the sort of thing that reaches out it's to you? Rural like, planning and policy didn't seem that interesting to me when I just read the title. I looked into it. I saw that I've worked with the module convener before. I read out the details about what you actually cover in there and it's actually turned out now that's one of the modules I'm definitely sticking in and I'm definitely doing. And that's actually how I pick my whole pathway. Because within the pathways, you have your broken down modules. And this goes to anybody, not just studying a real estate degree. I found the best thing you can do is you go on there and again, you use that technique. You look at the assessment method, you look at when the teaching is, you look at what's actually being taught, and you weigh all these things up as well as what interests you. And the other thing I like to do is I like to think about what's going to help me later in my career. So that rural planning and policy I mentioned is really looking at basically the economic pressures that's applied to land and difficult political pressures. Well, one of the things I may be dealing with in a land management team is the side of which greenbelt land is going to be released right for development. So it's again about deciding which lands I'd like to for sale, so that's where that's extremely useful for me. Now, regarding said. optional modules you can pick, you can choose to do a foreign language, you can, I believe you can actually pick anything at the university. You can pick things specific to your pathway. So say I've picked those that take me further down a development pathway. But say if there's two you liked, where you really like the um, rural side and you quite like the finance side, you could theoretically put the rural on the edge of the finance, although I don't think that's a, um, a well-trodden path and a pretty bad example on my part. You could say mix up the asset management and the development, like. You can take those optional modules or you can take some other modules or there's a lot of business ones you can bring over. I believe there's a couple from the built environment, so building pathology is an example. It's more about the physical materials that are used and when a building could decay and keep them specific to your degree. Uh, there's a, given that they open them up to the built environment and to the business school, I believe you can actually pick from a wide range, like pretty much any at the university. I just haven't done so because I've really, like, I'm really focusing down my um, specialist skills now, but I mean there's no reason you can't. So say a language for instance, that's the one thing I'm really missing from my arse was a language skill, but I don't think right now is the time to learn it. I think for me the time to learn a language is going to be if everything goes bad, just head away for a year while I'm still young and go and live in that country and learn it by speaking and I believe that would be a better opportunity for me to learn because I need the constant language going at it rather than trying to practice at uni. So that's why I averted away from it, but I know in this country we're not particularly good at learning foreign languages as a whole. So, yeah, that's my <laughs> excuse. So I understand this video is a bit all over the place and I haven't clearly laid things out, but if you want me to, if you drop it down in the comments below, I'm happy to go back, I'm happy to timestamp things and talk about what I discuss when at which part of the video. But I'm guessing if you've made it through to this long, then yeah, I probably should have put this part earlier. Yeah, if you've made it through to this long, you've probably already like, listened to all of that and you'll know. But yeah, that's something to learn for next time. Next Saturday Slice, each little improvement, keep doing, keep improving each time you do it. Productivity, it's the key. Have you guys been productive today? Again, I've had quite a productive one. I don't want to spoil anything for tomorrow's vlog. But if you have, if you've motivated anyone else today if you've done anything special just please let me know down in the comments it's one of these real community things where we build off each other and we grow as one but yeah i don't want to waste any more of your beautiful saturday time so thank you very much for your time and have a wonderful rest of your day